had the, um, initially this was ruled a suspicious death investigation. Right. Is that still the same as of today? No, it's not. So uh, that's a great question. Um, actually, I was just briefed by uh, Chief Randall about an hour and a half ago. Uh, there have been a lot of things that have changed and evolved over the last 24 hours. As we know, as any case, those things can't. Uh, usually what we find out um, in the first 15, 20 minutes changes three or four times before we kind of get on the right path and where we're headed. But the first 48, 72 hours are extremely important. Uh, the autopsy was completed today. Uh, the medical examiner has ruled this case as a homicide uh, due to blunt force trauma. Um, can you say uh, any, any more about that, uh, that, that blunt force trauma? Is it physical? Is it to the head? Where, where on the body? Any, any so you, so as much work as we, as we do together and, and people look at police work, everyone knows that this, this case um, we, we, we found our, our victim um, early Saturday morning. He, he was located. Uh, th there's still a lot of things going on and a lot of individuals to be interviewed. There's been a lot of leads that their detectives are following, so I can't go too much into that about certain types of evidence. Uh, I, I think it's best to say that, um, that it was it was dealt with blunt force, blunt force trauma, that it was not a gun, it was not a gunshot, gunshot wound. Uh, and I don't want to go much further than that because of some of the individuals that they want to investigate and some of the evidence that we have recovered and some of the evidence that we're looking for. I mean, this is a pretty unique case. There were a lot of moving pieces of the yes. community group yes. found him, Facebook Live. Um, can, can you talk about that and what that, it, does that hinder your investigation? Does it help that the community got, got out there to find him? Well, I will tell you, that that's a great question and there's a lot of, a lot of veins, so I'll try to touch on a couple. Uh, I, I received a phone call early uh, Saturday morning uh, to talk to Mrs. Gray. I talked to her on the phone, she was very distraught, and um, I was in route, we have our, had our youth basketball league, it was taking place that morning, but I wanted to go there first, uh, so um, I did respond there, and when I got there, I, I did see a citizens group uh, that, had, that were coming out of the area where, where Mr. Grady was located, um, and then everything kind of evolved from there. I think it's great that citizens get together, work together, share information. Um, I, I have no problem with citizens group uh, cooperating. I think I want to make sure we stress that, cooperating and sharing information uh, with, with the police. Now, was there evidence that, that was tampered with or, or caused us some things that's going to have to make us go back and redo shoe prints uh, in the grass, right? It had been raining, overcast, wet, damp that morning some shoe prints, some items that, that were found around the crime scene. Is that from victims? Is that from individuals who were searching that area? Is that from possible suspects? Does it present some challenges? Yes. Do I understand that? I do. Uh, I think I don't think there's any malice by individuals that were out there. I think that um, Mr. Wilson and I have, have had some conversation. I think that he put a group together because he, he cares about the community and he wanted to work uh, with Mrs. Grady to try to help her out. Um, uh, the, the wheelchair, you know, the, uh, the victim's uh, wheelchair was, was located, and I think that they were doing a, a good thing. I think that they wanted to help, and, and, and I understand that. And I, I appreciate him calling me and letting me know, uh, and then they stumbled and across and found, and found the, the victim. So th there's a lot of, of things that play into that. As long as we're working together, and I will, I will tell you um, uh, some of the videos that they took, um, they openly shared with us, so it was, it was good cooperation with the detectives, and I, I appreciate that. Those things will be important because in any, any case, especially a homicide case, every lead, whether it's good or bad, we've got to prove that it did happen or did not happen. So all those things come into place, so the willingness to share that information is a, a very good benefit, and it, it helps clear up some questions that we had. Oh, we understand now how those tracks may have been there because the video showed individuals walking through the grass, so that helps us. That would have been something that would have taken us a while to figure out, are these prints current, or did they happen last night or the last 24 or 48 hours? So uh, I just, as long as we're working together and communicating, uh, I, I think things can work that way. And I'm all about, you've heard me talk before about citizens taking their neighborhoods back, not to tolerating acts of violence. If they see something, to say something. Uh, it just has to make sure that we're sharing that information. And, and, and the only thing I caution is, is sometimes as small bits of information citizens may look at and well, this, 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 but there's there's other things that come in, in the investigation that the detectives are looking at. Forensics evidence points us in one direction. So make sure that um, things that get out there in, in social media 
things that are put back and forth that, that it doesn't just, one, I don't want to distract them to detect some of the leads they have, and I don't want the community to think, oh, it must be A, B, and C, uh, and they don't have some of that information that we have. I, I mean, I've got some detectives who have not been home that have been up 48 hours working on this case. That's how dedicated they are. Um, I actually had a, a good conversation with Mrs. Grady this afternoon, and, uh, you know, we, we, had a, we had a very heartfelt uh, conversation. We said a prayer together, um, and she commented that a lot of officers knew her son. And, and, and I've been here a year and a half when I, I was talking to officers in our staff meeting this morning as I got briefed. Uh, on, the, on the circumstances, a lot of officers uh, uh, knew Andre um, from when he was younger and, and even current. So they were very familiar with him. Uh, they had seen him, talked to him, and Ms. Grady alluded to that uh, same point. Um, and I told her um, that would take, this is the top priority right now for the department. Uh, the, the detectives have got some good, strong leads, but there's a lot of evidence that we need to go through. Uh, and I just want to make sure, I want to make sure one for their their welfare, that they get some rest, that I know they're pushing hard, they're trying to track down those leads, and that's important. Um, but they're, they're, they're doing a good job, and I know a couple of them attended the autopsy, and, and that's the latest information that was ruled the homicide uh, earlier today. So, strong leads, no one in custody yet? Do you have no. anybody detained for no. questioning? No, no, I don't want to get, I don't want to get, any, I can tell you, we have not made an arrest, but uh, we do not, we do not have anyone uh, detained, but I will tell you that they have interviewed several individuals, and they have a list of several individuals that we're looking for to interview. Mentioned so many people knew Andre. Um, sure. Any sense of motive? You know, I think that was one of the biggest things. Is is we look at uh, the manner someone was killed, um, uh, anything that, that anything that the family felt. I, I don't think we got any indication from the family of anybody that was out to get him or that there was any threats towards him. Uh, you know, like I said people knew him. They talked to him. He was pretty open. Um, but I will say that the department was familiar with him. Um, so uh, the motive is something that we're looking at. There's two or three different motives kind of that they're following right now. I think it's going to be one of the three, but until we get those interviews, go through that, that, that forensics evidence, and I, I have to say that those forensics detectives, that was a hard scene to process. And Chief Randall, I think, said it really good today. He said this is, this is really going to come down to a lot of that forensics evidence. And it's already proven in one interview that we've done how, how beneficial it's going to be. So I think it's going to take some time to go through that. But those, those forensic technicians did an amazing job under some very, very hard circumstances. But I'd be remiss before we go any further. I, I want to be clear that my heart goes out to Mrs. Grady. I, I talked to her at the scene and talking to her on the phone. And um, she, she is very supportive of what we're doing. I shared some information with her. Um, she's going through a hard time, as anyone would, right? Her whole family, that neighborhood, our community. This stuff is personal for, for this department. We're going to solve, I'll tell you this, and I told her, we're going to solve this case. I have the utmost confidence in those detectives, the information we have, information coming in. Um, citizens are calling. People are talking to us. I know that there are some frustrations. I know that some parts of the members of the family are frustrated. The individuals or individual or individuals who did this act, that's where the frustration needs to be funneled out. But I understand the frustrations of other people. The, the family feels that. I, I understand that. And I had that conversation with Ms. Grady, but I did assure her that we will go through this every step of the way with her, that she'll be involved, we'll stay in contact with her. Um, the lead detective has talked with her. Um, but I think that's important, not only how we handle evidence, we uh, handle this case, but also how we treat um, those that are left behind from from someone that they, they, they lost someone that they loved. And, and this was a heinous act that should never have happened. But we will solve this case. And I assume you would tell Ms. Ms. Green that you know you were going to be speaking with the media and, and answering whatever questions we had. Is there anything you know that she maybe would have wanted to say or told you to pass along if anybody asks about the investigation or anything in that capacity? No, we just we just said look, we had she was she was choked up. I could I could feel her tears through the phone. Um, like I said, we said a prayer together. Um, we just talked about clarity and direction. Um, and that if anyone knew anything to come forward, I asked her to certainly convey uh, to her family our commitment on this case, the commitment from the detectives. Uh, and again, that, that we would, from, from Saturday until this case goes to trial, and even after that, if she's part of our family, um, my heart goes out to her. 
you know, I can't imagine uh, a family member and being notified and found found that 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 was, that was, that was an act that no remorse for someone. I saw um, I saw detectives dealing with family members, Miss Grady. I saw the forensic detectives crawling into positions to recover evidence, people working through the night. So I understand her pain and I understand how she feels. I think it was important for me to reach out and have a conversation with her. I, and I gave her my cell phone number. I want her to know that she can call me 24 hours a day, any, anything at all that she needs. But I also asked the community if anybody's heard anything or seen anything to continue to call. There's a couple of people that have called with some information. I'd like to have them call back. Um, that people hear things and say things, but I would just caution um, not to get caught up in, in, in things that you may see in social media posts or tweets because there have been a lot of evidence that has come forward in the last, the last 24 hours, and I think there will be a lot more. Um, it's going to take us a while to go through those leads, but we're going to do it thoroughly. Um, the Commonwealth Attorney was over here for a briefing this morning, and uh, like I said, I, I think that I, I am completely confident in that detective division that, that closures that we've seen this year. Um, we just had our homicide support group meeting. We shared some information with her and the family about that. I think that can be helpful. But I think at the end of the day, our focus is going to be finding the individual or individuals who committed this, this act and then making sure that we do the best we can to take care of Ms. Gray and our family. I know that um, he was found in, it was called an empty house at the time. Um, can you confirm if it was just an empty house? Is it abandoned? Any more about the, the property? I, I, I don't recall if I saw a, uh, um, a for sale sign, but I know that we did, um, the house had uh, one of the locks on it, like you'd be showing it to for a house that's for sale. Um, and we were able to obtain keys. We did go in and search that residence. It is vacant. Um, it was locked. Um, and uh, we checked that before uh, before really we went any, any further to make sure that no one else was hurt inside that residence, that there might not be any evidence inside that residence, but we did do a thorough search and it was vacant. You talk about, you know, not you know, people not getting too caught up on social media right. and what's being said. And I understand you know, people who, who read that search, they want to now maybe, they want to see some things differently. And I, I know when it comes to missing people, it's sure. a person who takes, it's tough sometimes. So sure. Can you just go through and explain um, the process when, when a missing person case is filed? Do officers need to go out searching, or is, is there a policy that you want to follow? Yeah, there is, there is a policy. There's some pretty strict guidelines that, that are li laid out by uh, federal and, and state um, NCIC, VSIN. VSIN, State of Virginia, NCIC is national. Uh, first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we collect as much information as we can. Is there something uh, criminal? Is there something suspicious? Uh, has this individual, uh, whether we have a, a, an elderly person that may suffer from Alzheimer's or dementia that may hurt themselves, has someone made statements that I'm going off to, to, to hurt myself or, or maybe it's suicidal? Uh, what, what, what factors play into that? Is, is there a fear that someone has hurt this individual? Uh, or that they might be in danger to themselves or others? Is it a, a child that cannot take care of themselves? Um, someone that suffers from uh, mental illness or requires uh, drastic medication, medical attention, what are the elements of the weather? All those things play into it. Uh, what information are we able to obtain? Uh, what has been a past history? We may know someone that has wandered off before or uh, someone that has a history of that. So all those things come into play um, I can tell you that um, officers did the right thing. They got everything entered into VSIN, meaning that if in, an individual, if I were missing and someone stopped me or came across me in Culpeper or Richmond, it would hit, and then Virginia, if someone came across me in Oakland, California, the national uh, NCIC that it was in the database and covered there. We even followed up with an email and a phone call to make sure that that information was all placed in those databases because that's important. We searched the, the uh, immediate area. And, and then, like I said, officers were familiar with, with Andre, uh, so there was a search there. Uh, one thing, you know, as I look back, it's, it's, it's funny you ask that question. Um, as we did the brief, and we kind of, this morning, it was one of the number one thing we talked about uh, was the, the, the search, the evidence, where we are in the case, the suspects. Um, is there anything we could do better? Um, and I want to make sure that right away that we get information out on the radio, um, not just letting someone know, hey, this is who we're looking for. Let's make sure that we get that out on the radio so everyone's looking. Um, sometimes 
you'll, we'll ask information, but I think if we ask maybe two or three more questions, we may get on depth, uh, more in depth. I want to make sure that we do that thorough. Um, you know, as, as we look back, uh, kind of how that how everything processed from 8:30 to 4:30 to 9:30, 10 o'clock that morning. There was a lot of a lot of moving parts, and then we had two different officers involved. We had one officer in our central precinct who took the initial report, and then an officer from South Precinct who responded. So I want to make sure that we're having that communication. But I'll, I think I don't say this. I always think we can do things better. I think we can do better homicide cases. I think we can do better. Um, uh, missing person cases, I think we can do better, uh, whether it's a drug investigations. What we probably spend half of our time, you know, after action, what can we do better to improve on? Um, but the, the number one focus is to bring justice to that family um, and re resolve this case and bring some closure to the Grady family. And, and I will tell you, um, I understand their pain, I understand their suffering. There was a large crowd, I don't know if any of you were there that morning, but there was a large crowd that gathered. Um, and there was a lot of questions. There was frustration. Why hasn't the why hasn't uh, the individual why hasn't Andre been moved yet? And we had we tried to explain. And I think most of them understood that the, the preservation of evidence all will play a role now as we move into the investigation phase. But but I, I understand I understand frustrations. And sometimes when you don't know who the individual the suspects are, right? Sometimes the easiest people to lash out against or to be frustrated with is the police department. And we don't take that personal. I understand. I thought, I thought the officers did a great job trying to share information with the family. Um, we wanted to get Miss Grady as it started. Uh, the elements in the rain. We wanted to get her out of the rain. Her pastor came out and just did a phenomenal job. I, I, I really need to, to reach out to him and tell him thank you. We, he did a phenomenal job. We, we were able to move her in and get her downtown uh, to be interviewed and get and just make sure that medically that she was okay. You know the grief that she felt in her heart and things that she was going through. So. Um, but as we move forward, this is going to be the police department, the Commonwealth Attorney, the State Lab, and Norfolk, our forensics technician, uh, the detectives focusing on leads. Um, I will probably get another brief before I leave today um, because that's how hot this case is. That's how hot things are coming in. But they just have to cycle through those things. You mentioned that this, the, the group who searched were well meaning, and yet it is possible to tamper with evidence unintentionally. Sure. Are there certain ground rules that? Groups should follow because I mean, you can get a base group up pretty quickly now. If someone's reading sure. the story and they want to do this again, what, what should they do? So uh, I will tell you the video that I saw. Um, I talked to, to Mr. Wilson and saw the video, and I think that he did exactly what he should have done when uh, evidence in our victim, in Mr. Grady, was discovered. He, he instructed the group back up, let the police come and preserve evidence back up. And it's hard, you know, because emotions and family, it's hard. But I think he tried to get them to back away and, and to preserve this preserve the scene as much as possible. Um, was there evidence that we've got to go back now? And, and, and But there was no intention to, to, to just mess with anything or, or contaminate the scene. But does it happen yet? We'll cipher through it. It will take us a while. It's some added work. But I don't think there were any negative intentions. And like I said, he shared the video. He did the right thing by asking them to back away and, and don't touch anything, preserve it. Um, so. It, it'll create some challenges for us, but uh, the same thing if you go home and your home is broken into and you start looking around and touching things and you might realize, oh, wait a minute, something's not right, let me call the police. And then are these fingerprints, your fingerprints or someone else's? So, uh, you know, I, I think if, if evidence is stumbled on, if something is, is found, even today, if someone were to find something, um, that neighborhood or another, um, an article of clothing or, or whatever it might be, you know, to call us and, and let us deal with it. I'd rather have the forensic technicians process that. And, and look, that's not just citizens, that's just not search groups. Officers, myself, right? At times we go into a, a crime scene and the forensic technicians will tell us, you know, hey, chief, get out of the crime scene. And they're absolutely right. And I don't take any offense to that, right? Uh, the information they have may lead to shell casings in the middle of the street or a, a, a footprint or a fingerprint. Uh, don't touch the door handles. You walk into, is everything okay here? Hey, chief, we haven't processed that yet. So, and I've been doing this 27 years. So I put the utmost respect um, for the work that those forensic technicians do. They know what they're doing. They're professionals. They are certified. They have a great relationship with the state lab. Um, I want to thank the, the medical examiner for coming out and, and helping us process that scene. And they'll put all those notes together and piece things back together, and, and we'll go for there. But we're going to solve this case. Mr. Grady deserves it. Mrs. Grady deserves it, that community. And I, like I said, I have the utmost confidence in those detectives, and I think the citizens of this city will come forward with even more information than we already have. 
Um, it's just going to take a, just the process now that we have to go through. Is it typical for the Commonwealth's attorney to be involved in some capacity this early on? I will tell you, um, Howard Glenn and Commonwealth, we have a great relationship with the Commonwealth Attorney's Office. Uh, one of the things that we uh, have been doing that I think now have even increased um, it, with, with Chief Randall and the Investigative Division, that there's a briefing, usually within 24 hours, um, and we're inviting not just the detectives there, right, not just the, the forensic technicians, but uh, community youth and outreach. Who do they maybe know in the neighborhood, in the community, right? How about uh, the narcotics division? Who are some of the individuals that they may have cases on that might have some of that? When we talk about the motive, was it possibly drug related? Was it a robbery? Um, who are individuals that we're investigating? Um, sometimes people who break into homes are the same people that, that may lift uh, to try to steal things out of cars. Are the precinct detectives communicating with the, uh, with the, the property crimes detectives uh, you know, for, for burglars and things like that? So. Uh, We've expanded that. So to answer your question, yes, the Commonwealth Attorney comes to the briefings we have on the homicides. Um, and it's, it's oftentimes it's Howard Glenn himself. Um, but it, they were they were all here today, uh, at least three that I saw, um, to share information. And, and when you put all those people in a room, you lay out, here's what we have. Because we have an investigation now that it's you know, just over 40 hours. Uh, of all the things that we have laid out, what is the right thing we should be doing? Is there anything we've missed from the Commonwealth Attorney's viewpoint? from the detective's viewpoint, the um, uh, forensics viewpoint, who do we need to look at? What cameras might we want to check? Um, what evidence do we need to go back over? Who do we need to interview? Do we want to go back over and ask this question? We talk about even with missing persons, to make sure that we're asking all those questions and then even going beyond. You know, we have a, a, a standard that we use, but that's a standard. You know, we want, how do we get better? How do we go above and beyond? So to ask those questions and put all those, those, those people in the room that have different pieces and different, different expertise, I think that's what makes it successful. That's what's led to this 70% clearance rate that we have this year, well up from last year. Um, but it's, it's a team approach, and it takes everybody working together. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I was, I'm, I think it would almost be an oddity for them not to be here. They are, they are very much engaged with our homicide cases, the ones that we're currently investigating, the ones that are going to trial, and even ones that we completed. We had our homicide support group uh, Christmas dinner and, and members of the Commonwealth Attorney were there to join us. It's, it's how you take care of not just evidence and not just a case, but also surviving victims, to let them know that we care about them, right? And I think that's important, making sure detectives are following up and, and interacting with those that have lost loved ones. And it's the same thing, I, I, I want to make sure that Ms. Brady knows that, that she's part of our family, that we're going to be reaching out to her and sharing information. I want her to be included in this all the way. I don't want her to sit at home and say, I wonder what's happening, right? I want her to be able to say, I've talked to Detective Gordon. I've talked to the assistant chiefs. I've talked to the chief of police. They've called me. It's not just me calling them. It's we're, we're reaching out. Uh, and, I, and I think that, that builds trust. It's transparent. And even if we don't have anything new, there's nothing new today. At least we're letting her know your loved one and you are not out of our thoughts. And I, I think that's how, how we build strong relationships and encourages other people to come forward. It's certainly been working a lot um, in the relationships I think that we have in the community. Um, some of the recent most cases, and, and, and I have not for one minute, I have not for one minute forgotten those cases that are still open that we have not closed this year. Those cases are still assigned. We're still working hard on those cases. The one just before, the day before Thanksgiving, I talked to several several citizens who live in that area. Um, and I remember talking to the neighbor of that case, um, and it's it's citizens getting involved. So, going back to your question, sir, about uh, did. There are some things that we'll have to, to cipher out, what footprints were coming and going, but I don't think that there was any malice, and I, I appreciate them sharing information with us, and I appreciate uh, uh, what they did once they found found uh, found Mr. Grady to, to, to back away, and we were able to rip that scene off. And they were very respective of, of, uh, of the crime scene and, and how we processed it. Um, they had some questions, and I understand their frustration, and it, 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 it's okay. Mentioned uh, blunt force trauma. Do you see if you would cover the murder weapon? I, I don't want to go into anything about evidence that we. I can tell you we have recovered evidence, but there's a lot more evidence I would like to find. I don't want to go much further than that because of how close we are and some things that we're looking for very specifically. Can you say why um, Mr. Grady may have been in that area? Did he live nearby? Can you comment on whether he frequented that area? I think it's safe to say, like I said, a lot of officers knew Andre. Uh, a lot of officers had relationships that talked to him, interacted with him. 
and it would not be uncommon for him to be to be in that area. I think that's an area that, like I said, we've known him uh, even from his uh, injury that he had early on when he was a child. We, we, we've known him for a while. Off, officers that have worked here have known him for a while, and, and it would not be uncommon for him to be in that area. That, that, that okay. Is there a danger to the public because he's not I don't think that this was just an individual that that someone or individuals said, hey, here, here's somebody to take advantage of. I think, um, without going too much into the case, I'm fairly certain that the individuals that did this act knew who, they, who, knew, Mr. who knew who Andre was. I think that they, they knew it. Would it be fair to say uh, you believe at this point for it to be an isolated incident? Yes. Yes. I think that's fair. I believe you are searching for more than one individual? I think that until we determine who did this, that individuals or indivi an individual or individuals there are which way the case goes is really going to determine, determine on the evidence, especially the forensics evidence and what witnesses and uh, maybe some footage from cameras may, may end up showing us. So I don't want to I don't want to paint myself into a corner there until uh, I'm going to give those detectives the leeway to follow every single lead that comes in uh, and, until they tell me that it's one individual or two, uh, three, whatever it is. Um, until they until they tell me that, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to go with, at this point, I just don't know. But we're, not, we're, not, we're, going to, we're going to focus on every single lead that comes through. And, I, and it, it would be remiss if I didn't think the citizens who have called, who have come forward, who came down here to the police headquarters and, and sat around and waited to be interviewed. Um, and they were very, very cooperative. I think when you talk about community policing, it's, are we trying to do the best thing? I think people understand mistakes can be made, things can happen, frustration occurs, people get frustrated, um, impatient. Why hasn't this been happened already? But when people know that you care about them, and you care about this case, I, I think that's what the foundation of community policing is, and I, it is my hope that this community knows that we will stop at nothing. We're not going to leave anything unturned to solve this case. It doesn't make any difference to me whether race, gender, age. We're going to put every resource that we have in this department to solving this case and bringing closure to Miss Grady and her family. Okay. You were talking about cameras, uh, the Marshall or Early Learning Center. Uh, numerous churches are in the area. If you happen to pick up footage that seems um, suspicious or you want to look into it further, is that something you would want to hold close to the chest on this case, or would you want to just release like it, it to the public and media? You know, I think those things may determine if we if we were able to find the evidence that we needed someone identified. The media and the community have been extremely helpful. Uh, we're back to the homicide that we had over the summer that started here and then ended in in in, in Hampton. Uh, we released information uh, to the community, and within minutes, we had an identity and a, and a location. So I think we look at the evidence about w what do we have? Do we already know who this individual is, or do we need help? Uh, is this a particular vehicle that we can't see the license plate on, or, or do we know it? I'd have to. I wouldn't want to make a broad statement. Uh, I think we would assess that, and the detectives would kind of decide when we release something. Is there a need to release it, or? partnering with the Commonwealth Attorney, what, what's, what's um, Howard Glenn and his staff, what are their thoughts? We make that decision uh, as a group. But I would, I would not rule it out. Any other questions? We good? Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. I'm sorry to hold you. Sorry to hold you up, but I'm glad you came out. Thanks for